had always thought I'd dreamt it. This all started about two weeks ago. I was having lunch in Camden, London, England, with my sister. It was one of our favorite places to go and hang out on a Saturday afternoon when we didn't really have anything else planned. We had done this periodically since we were teenagers, and even though it was cold and drizzling, we decided to brighten up our day with the eccentric sights and sounds of Camden Market. We had hit pretty much all of the jewelry stalls looking for some stud earrings for our new piercings and decided to stop for something to eat. We settled on a Vietnamese food stall and took our hot metal containers holding mouth-watering food to some tables and benches nearby. Halfway through our food, my sister started talking about her friend who was having a baby soon. She couldn't quite believe the crazy friend she had known since age 11 was soon to become a mama. This got us talking about our childhoods and funny stories from when we were kids. Then she said something that threw me. Oh my god, remember when you used to have night terrors and sleep paralysis? That was so crazy. I used to wake up to you screaming, then I would start screaming, and mom would come running in thinking we were being attacked. She laughed it off, and I had to try to forget how scary those times were, and I smiled, but it didn't quite reach my eyes. After that conversation, I couldn't get one particular memory out of my head. It had been more of a recurring nightmare. I must have been about 11 years old, which would have made my sister about 7 years old. I would always wake up screaming, as my sister said, typical night terror stuff, cold sweat, panting breath, feeling like I couldn't get out of the nightmare even when awake. This one was the most memorable though, and it was a doozy. I would be downstairs in my childhood home, I was standing in the kitchen in my PJs barefoot, hair messy from sleep. No lights were on, and I could just make out the garden and patio in the dark through the glass patio doors. The house was silent. I remember always feeling uneasy in the dream, like I shouldn't be down here alone at night. No matter how warm a home, or how many years you have lived there, your house always looks different in the night, in the dark, when no one else is awake, especially as a kid. Suddenly, I would hear a creaking sound above me. In the dream, I always took ages to turn around as if I was rooted to the spot. I would feel that familiar rush of fear in the pit of my stomach that would quickly and perturbingly rise to my throat, like suddenly wanting to be sick. I then would walk slowly to the foot of the stairs. In the dark, I would stand, looking up to the top step, just above and slightly to the right was our attic door. It would be open, just hanging there. Then slowly, and oh so creepily, I would see the figure of a man lowering himself from the attic. He would land with a softly barely audible thud like a cat on the landing. I would be terrified, eyes wide, feet glued to the floor. He would then stand on the top step looking down at me. Even fifteen steps away he looked huge, intimidating, and scary as hell. He would stare at me, my mouth would open in a silent scream as he raised a finger to his lips and silently shushed me. I would then shake and attempt to move. This is when he would come running toward me, almost flying down the steps. I would then wake in my bed, screaming, cold, frightened beyond belief, as my mom came running into our bedroom and turned on the light, scaring the boogeyman from my nightmares away. I never told my parents or my sister exactly what happened in these dreams. I would usually just cry and shake and say something about the man. My mom would hold me and comfort me and tell me it was just a bad dream, as moms do for their kids so they can all calm down and get back to sleep. Three days ago, I was staying at my parents' house, my childhood home. I had a meeting nearby the next morning and thought I would kill two birds with one stone by seeing them and not having to get up at the crack of dawn for my meeting. It was a nice evening, my mom's roast dinner and some cheesy TV. Nice and comforting. They headed to bed around 10 p.m., and even though I was tired, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't get the dream out of my head. So I decided to do something a little nuts. I went up into the attic. I used my dad's old stepladder that he kept in the now spare room and pulled myself into the attic. I had the torch from my phone, which is ridiculously bright and could see around the attic space. Typical attic stuff, really. Boxes, old clothes covered in plastic sheets 
some old furniture and toys my mum is probably keeping for when me and my sister have kids of our own someday. I gingerly walked about the space, careful on the old flooring and beams. There were way too many spider webs up here which told me my parents had not been up here for ages. I don't know what I was looking for. I was just about to leave and go get some sleep when something out of the corner of my eye glinted in the torchlight. I moved closer, slowly, and could see it was an old zipper. It looked as though it belonged to a sleeping bag. I remember thinking it was unlike my mom to keep our old sleeping bags from camping when we hadn't been since I was 15. Just as I got two steps closer, I froze. It wasn't just a sleeping bag. Poking out from the top of the bag was matted, gray, dry-looking hair. I wanted to run downstairs and get my dad. I wanted to scream and puke at the same time. But just like in my dream, I froze, feet glued to the floor, mouth open in a silent scream. Just as I was about to turn and jump through the attic door, the sleeping bag moved. The man, now old and frail, sat up, looking straight at me, and in a semi-toothless grin, put his fingers to his lips and said, Shh. I threw my phone at him and ran to the attic door, jumping onto the landing and spraining my ankle. My parents woke and came running onto the landing. This time, I would get the words out and told them exactly what I'd seen. We found out two days later from the police that his name was Martin Walsh. He had been wanted by the police for murdering his wife and attempting to murder his daughter. He had been wanted for the past 20 years. The police couldn't quite believe he had been living in our attic for all this time, but they weren't as shocked as me or my family. The police also said we were lucky to be alive as he was considered very unstable and dangerous. I don't know why Martin Walsh never hurt us or attempted to kill us. I don't know why we never knew he was actually in our attic. I don't know why I never said anything about my dream to my parents or sister. But what I do know is maybe we shouldn't be so quick to dismiss our nightmares as just nightmares. Maybe some of them are things we are just too frightened to admit are real. <laughs>